Hello everybody and welcome back. Aggregate calculations can be confusing in Tableau. For me, the most difficult to understand is the attribute aggregation. It took me a really long time to finally wrap my head around it. Attribute is an aggregate of a dimension, but it's not a count or a min or a max. So why would we want to do that anyway? In this video, I'm gonna demystify the attribute aggregation for you. If you're new here, my name is Andy Kriebel. I've been a Tableau user since 2007, and I created this channel to help you learn Tableau fast. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe and share it with somebody else so that they can learn from the content too. In this video, I'm gonna cover three things about the attribute aggregation. First, I'm gonna define the attribute aggregation. Second, I'm gonna show you several examples of how the attribute function works, along with examples of why it works sometimes, but not others. I'll wrap up by explaining the difference between the attribute aggregation and aggregations like min and max. I'll show you how the attribute aggregation is designed to prevent you from displaying misleading data. Let's get started. Let's look at a really simple example. Let's say that we have three employees. One employee makes $51,000 a year and two other employees make $55,000 a year. We're going to turn the salary into an attribute. When we do that, we see that none of the salary numbers change. That's because each employee has only one salary. Let's look at another example. In this example, we're looking at the salaries broken down by the employees. We have one employee that makes 51,000 and we have two employees that make 55,000. When we change the employee into an attribute, notice that we get a star for the employees that make 55,000. Tableau is alerting us that there's more than one employee that have a salary of 55,000. So let's look at the same example in Tableau. We're gonna look at the salaries for each employee. If we change the salary to an attribute and then make it discrete, Notice I can still see the salary of each employee. That's because each employee only has one salary. Let's look at another example. This time we're looking at the employees within each salary. So in other words, for a salary of 51,000, we have three employees. A salary of 52,000, we have one employee, and so on. Let's go ahead and change the employee to an attribute. Notice now that we get stars next to 51,000, 54,000, and 55,000, etc. But we get a single name next to 52,000 and 53,000. That's because within the 51,000 salary, there's more than one employee. Let's take the name field off of the view and add it to the tooltip instead. When you put a dimension onto a tooltip, notice that it's aggregated automatically. When I hover over my bar, I see that I have a star. To get around that, if I want to see the list of employees within the tooltip, I'm going to create a Vizen tooltip. Let's create a new worksheet and drag employee to the row shelf. Now back on my salary by employee sheet, if I click on tooltip, I can insert that new sheet that I just created. And now when I look at the tooltip, I can see all of the employees that have that salary. In this example, we're looking at a scatter plot of order by sales broken down by salary. So each dot in the view represents the sales and the orders for that particular salary. Let's go ahead and put name on tooltip so we can see the employees within each salary. When I do that, Tableau automatically aggregated that dimension. And when I hover over some of the circles, you'll see that I get stars next to some of them. That means that there's more than one employee at that salary. But then down here with the salary of 52,000, there's only one employee with that salary. So again, the way that I would work around that is to go to my tooltip and I'm going to insert my employees. And when I hover over, I can now see the employees that are within each of those salaries. In this example, I'm looking at sales by quantity broken down by state. Within each state, I want to see a list of the cities. So I'm going to drag city to the tooltip. Again, notice that Tableau has aggregated that dimension. When I hover over one of the dots, notice I get a star for the cities. That's because there's more than one city within each state. Makes sense. So Tableau is alerting us that there is not a one-to-one -one relationship. Let's look at another example. Here we're looking at sales by subcategory. If I want to look at it by region, I'm going to drag region to the color shelf, but I want to see region in the tooltip only. So I'm going to drag region to the tooltip. Tableau automatically aggregated that data. And when I hover over phones, you'll see that I get a star for the region. That's because there's sales for phones in more than one region. If I want to work around that, I'll create a new sheet. In this sheet, I'll put region onto the rows and I'll put sales onto the columns. Now when I go back to my subcategory sales sheet, I'm going to remove the attribute from the tooltip, click on the tooltip button, and I'm going to insert that new sheet that I just created. And now when I hover over phones, I can see the sales for each region within phones. Same thing for chairs and storage and etc. This time, let's look at the salary by the name of the employee and sales. Duplicate the name field twice. I'm going to change the first one to a minimum, the second one to a maximum, and notice the, the min name, the max name, and the name are the same. That's because my partition is defined by salary and name. Let's go ahead and write a new calculated field to determine whether name should be brought back or if a star should be brought back. Let's call this our name attribute. So if the min name 
is equal to the max name, then I want to return the min name, else I want to return a star. Let's drag that field onto the rows and notice that the name attribute is the same as the name. That's because our partition is defined by salary and name. If I take name off the view, my min and my max are now not the same because my partition is defined only by salary. So I get a star. For 52,000, my min name and my max name are the same, so I get the name returned. We need to be careful that we don't mislead our audience by changing the aggregation from an attribute to a min or a max. In this example, we're looking at sales versus orders by salary, and then we put the name field on the tooltip, which change it to an attribute. For this mark here at 57,000 salary, we can see that the name has a star, indicating Indicating that there's more than one name for that salary. Down here at the bottom, we have a name because there's only one person at that salary. You might be tempted to get rid of that star by changing the aggregation of the name to a minimum. When you do that, you now have a single name for the salary at 57,000. You might think that's great, but that's actually misleading your audience. If I change it to a maximum, we get a different name this time. So the min and the max return different results. Hence, it'll be misleading our audience. Leaving as an attribute allows Tableau to alert you when there's more than one value. I hope this video has helped demystify the attribute function and gotten you on your way to understanding what it does, why it exists, what Tableau is trying to tell you by giving you that pesky little star, and how to work around that star if you want to show it in the tooltip. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. It'll help other people discover it too. If you made it all the way to the end, please leave me a comment with a function that you find challenging. Lastly, please don't forget to subscribe. I don't want you to miss any new content I create.